and so confused in the next, but God is with us as Isaiah 41 verse 10 tells us. His voice is calling all of us today right now. What we give attention to, we give authority to. Maybe a text is what needs your attention. Maybe someone else in need needs your attention. Maybe following through on that Bible plan is what needs your attention. Today and forever, God is with you. Are you willing to listen to his voice and trust in him? Hello and welcome to the first night of Youth Revival. It's so good to be together. Come on, we're gonna start our night by praising and worshiping our God together. So right where you are, let's sing this out. Salvation sounds a new beginning As distant hearts begin believing Redemption's bid is unrelenting Your love goes on Chasing shadows You gave the world a light to follow When the world is red Free at last, he 
Come on, every voice we sing. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival. So good to be together tonight. I'm going to ask Ben to pray for us in this moment of worship, just to pray over every single young person. So Ben, you lead us in that. Yeah, awesome. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for every single person, every young person, every youth leader, every youth ministry, and every church yeah. that is represented right now. Every yeah. single person watching wherever they are, God, you see every single person. Lord, you know every single yeah. person. God, you have the very best Come on. for every person. And even though we can't, we're not able to be in the room together tonight, God, we thank you that we can still gather together online. And Lord, we still believe you're going to speak right into our hearts, yeah. Lord. You're going to change us, Jesus, from the inside out. So, Father, we just pray and commit right now, God. We're going to say, Lord, have your way in us. Yeah, come on. Lord, we believe for a youth revival yeah. to break out over these two days, over these 24 hours that we have together, Lord, yeah. that you would do something in our lives that would change our youth ministries, our churches, yeah. our schools, our colleges, our universities forevermore, God. Yeah, and we thank, thank you for Jesus. everything you've already done so far and everything you're, you're going to do. So Jesus, we just start tonight by giving you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you put amen in the comments right now? So good, Ben. Awesome. Well, it's great to be together. It is. And uh, it's great to uh, be together as Youth Revival Conference on. Online. And this might be the first moment you're tuning in. We want to give you a huge welcome. My name's Nathan, and this is... Ben. Ben. Yes. And, um, and uh, we want to give you a huge welcome. Maybe you've never uh, been to church, been sent the stream by a friend, then uh, want to welcome you as well. Know that you belong here. And uh, it's so good that we get to do this, Yeah, bit. it is amazing. It is. I want to also encourage you, if you've just joined or maybe it's your first time taking part in one event this year, uh, we've got a pretty incredible Youth Revival website. Come on. Which people need to check out. Yes. And we've got something on it called the dashboard. Yes. So one of our team are going to post a link uh, to the Youth Revival website right now, but the whole program's on there. Also, if uh, there's a text number, you can send prayer requests to. There's yeah. a, a, a Zoom prayer kind of call that's going to be happening after this session, but yeah. we'll talk about that a little bit later. But everything you need to know about Youth Revival is on there, so make sure you go check that out. And we've got a, a pretty packed program. I mean, we've already had a packed program from two o'clock we started today. And uh, big shout out to Matt and Nick who have been uh, doing yeah. our opener pre-shows and having a whole load of fun, uh, getting people to eat a whole load of hot dogs. That and, was pretty uh, hilarious. I know, I know, but the, the, the funniest bit was uh, listening to Matt and Nick actually like I don't know what you call it, like wretch and yeah. get like and the cold baked beans and tomatoes mm. and Stuart Bell like completely Ugh. destroyed them in dinner day he for did. that. He did. I don't think either of them have got a job anymore. Uh, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That was amazing. But we've also got 
an incredible late night program we happening. We do, there. yeah. So we've mentioned it a few times so far, but we have space happening from 9 p.m. So like, like I said earlier, if you've been to one event before, you'll know that we normally have a late night venue called Space, where there's loads of fun uh, stuff that you can do. And basically what we've tried to do, Nathan, is take all that good stuff yeah. from Space Come on. and put it online. Come on. So there's going to be some video games. We're going to have a Fortnite competition. And I want to thank every single person who's sent in their gamer tags already to our Youth Revival Instagram account. But if you've not and you want to take part in Fortnite, make sure you head over to our uh, Instagram page at YTH underscore revival and send in your epic gamer tags to us. And then we're going to create a group chat just before uh, the Fortnite match starts with all the details of how, how you can join. But we've not just got Fortnite, we've got um, Bingo happening with a special guest. Come on, I'm not going to Bingo. Spoil. So you need to be there for you that. Need to watch that. We've also got live music where you can request uh, some worship songs, which are going to be holy, performed. holy requests only. Ben. Holy karaoke, holy karaoke. It's going to be amazing. A bit better than karaoke. Yeah. And uh, we also trying to remember the other thing we've got. We've also got a pizza drop off. Come on. As well. So we all love pizza. Yeah. And I'm sure everyone who watched um, the dating thing earlier with the pizza <laughs> was very jealous yeah. that they were eating Domino's pizza but someone's going to get some pizza so tonight. someone's going to get some so pizza so watch out for that so we've got a, a, a packed program but we're believing right now in this revival experience that that God is going to move in each one of our lives and I believe uh, you know like uh, just through worship that God's already been moving right where you are um, but I have picked the funniest comment that I saw in the chat Ben and uh, it was brilliant uh, it was by, by a guy called Josh. Oh, I'm who ready said, for this. Um, uh, I think he, he said, I went into the mosh pit, or we call it the praise pit. I went into the praise pit with some sliders on. It was not a good idea. Oh, my god. And, uh, and so I, I think we should highlight some of the chat. And um, <laughs> someone's saying, can we have Joe Exotic? Joe Exotic is not available, unfortunately, but you will enjoy the guest. Uh, maybe next year. Maybe Joe, next Joe year we'll appearance. get Joe Exotic. Well... We're in for a treat. Yeah. Do you want me to intro yeah, the next Yeah, come bit? on. Well, we had one of these earlier, and it was absolutely amazing. A one minute of fire from Anna George. Well, we've got another amazing young lady who is going to share a one minute of fire. So I want you to make some noise in the comments for Ella Sheldon come from on. Icon Youth in Chesterfield, who is going to share tonight's one minute of fire. Hey Youth Survival, I'm Ella and I'm going to share a one minute fire with you all. One of my favourite worship songs is Shelter In by Vu Worship. The song talks a lot about how we can call upon God and he will deliver us. This reminds me of when I was younger. If I was worried or scared, I would always go to my mum for safety and encouragement. She'd be the first person I'd think of and I knew I could always call her name and she would just come and she would help me. In the same way I rely upon my mum in times of trouble, we can go to God for that same love and encouragement. In the bridge of the song, it says, I hear you say, because you love me, I will rescue you, I'll deliver you. I hear you say, because you call me, I will answer you, I'll fight for you. I love these lines because they come straight from scripture. Because in Psalm 91 verses 14 and 15, it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I'll protect him. For he acknowledges my name, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honour him. I love this image that we can call upon God and he will protect us. The Bible gives countless images of how God comes into our situations and will care for us. Uh, for example, in Proverbs, God is described as a fortified tower that we can run to for safety. And in Matthew, God is described as like a hen who gathers her chicks under her wings. No matter your situation, God will provide care and safety in a way that's perfect to you. I love that we serve a God that in seasons of hardship or moments of fear, we can just call upon his name and he will help us protect us and stand with us in whatever is happening. So as we go into this new school year, let's call upon his name and seek that refuge in him, remembering that he loves us 
and will fight for us. Hey, what an incredible one minute of fire. I think it was a little bit longer, but from Ella Sheldon from Icon Youth. Come on, show us some love in the chat. Uh, I, I, I love it because we were we heard from Anna earlier and now we heard from Ella and just hearing uh, young people's voices encouraging us and uh, I just love it. So Ella, great job. And uh, I know a load of people are putting some love in the chat. So incredible job. Well, tonight we are privileged. Uh, super privileged because uh, over this uh, 24 hours, we got two guests with us, Pete and Laura Toggs. And uh, it's incredible that we're able to hear from Pete and Laura as Youth Revival Conference. And um, it's just a real privilege to have them speak to each and every one of us. And so I want to encourage you, open your heart. Open your heart to what God wants to speak to you today. Peter and Laura lead Hillsong uh, Young and Free and oversee all of Hillsong Youth Fair, Hillsong Church, and they're based in Sydney, Australia. And uh, I know you're going to love them. You're going to love the message that they both bring. But why don't you, in the chat, welcome Pete Toggs as he comes to bring the message right now. Well, how cool is it to be gathered, joined, with Icon Youth in the UK. What's happening, everyone? My name's Peter Toggs. Uh, my wife and I are so pumped to be a part of Youth Revival Conference. Big shout out to Nathan and Debbie. Love what you guys are doing and building over there. And uh, it's just such an honor to be considered and asked to be a part of this conference. I'm believing that these few moments that we share together online, though we may be scattered abroad, we are gathered together in heart and spirit because we come together and what brings us together is the name of Jesus and the Word of God. So I'm excited to bring the Word to many young people today believing that this is going to help so many people everywhere. All right, well, this message is called A Beautiful Mess. Let me read you a scripture found in Mark 5, verse 35. Let me set up the story for you. It's the story of Jairus needing a miracle for his daughter. Jesus is walking, there's a crowd pushing around him, and he's on his way to perform a miracle of hopefully raising Jairus' daughter to life. Jairus' story is interrupted by the woman with an issue. This is where we find Jesus stopping, asking everyone, who touched me? To the disciples' amazement. They're like, everyone's kind of touching you. But Jesus says, no, someone touched me. I felt power leave my body. There we see this beautiful transaction of Jesus healing this woman who had struggled with uh, uh, an issue of blood for 12 years. And this is where we pick up the story because Jairus is here waiting on his delayed miracle in his beautiful chaos. Check it out in verse 35 of Mark chapter 5. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? In verse 36, it says, overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jairus, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. The story goes on. Jesus goes in and he performs a miracle. Talitha kum, dead girl, wake up. And we see a miracle take place. A beautiful mess. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. Lord, that we are joined together. Lord, in these few moments, I thank you that you are going to speak to people, God. Lord, you are going to encounter people. We are going to encounter your presence. And I just pray in these few moments as we come around the word, Lord, truly change people's lives. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said together, amen, amen. A beautiful mess. Now, I'm no uh, art enthusiast. I I am no uh, art aficionado. I know there's people watching on right now and maybe you're a person, you're a lover of all things art. 
My wife actually, Laura, she took me to an art gallery recently and we walked in and I was actually amazed by those who were kind of, you know, just in awe of some of these masterpieces. But I was also a little confused, if I'm honest with you, because Look, as again, I, I, I'm no uh, enthusiast of art. I am no, uh, I, I appreciate art. And so I don't want to offend anyone before we go on, but I, I was kind of confused all at the same time because I was looking at these masterpieces, if you like, some of them being multi-million dollar value paintings and wondering why is this particular piece so valuable? And looking at the expression on people's faces as they looked at these masterpieces in awe and wonder and amazement. See, that's why I appreciate anyone who does love art. I appreciate art enthusiasts. I appreciate these people who uh, look at these pieces of artwork because the truth is you see something that honestly that I don't. Because some of these masterpieces they look like, honestly, if you will, my 10 year old drew it. And I just cannot work out for the life of me, how is it that this artwork, this masterpiece, which if I'm honest, looks like mess on a canvas, chaos on a canvas. Why is this so valuable? Because I've since discovered those who love art, those who are artists and aficionados of art, you see, the reason they see something that perhaps you and I may not is because they understand the value is not just in what is painted, but in perhaps the message the artist is trying to communicate. The value of the art is actually and could very well be in who actually is the artist of the painting. I think this is indicative of perhaps the mess you and I find ourselves in, the chaos of life. You know, the truth is this, chaos, mess, the messiness of life, it's a part of the faith the journey. It's actually a part of our society and our world, all you need to do is look around, flick on the news and see that right now we are in chaotic times. Chaos is a part of the fallen world that you and I live in. In fact, I want to remind you today, whoever's joining us right now, do you know chaos, mess, is where God can create something beautiful from, hence why I've called this message a beautiful mess. You see, creation is predicated on chaos. Creation is actually predicated on mess, desolation. If you look at the creation narrative in Genesis 1.1, and you can follow this closely with me, it says this in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. How good is that, that God was there from the very beginning. He was there since the beginning of time, that in the beginning, it was God created the heavens and the earth. Now look at this in verse two. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now the Hebrew word for the words formless, empty, darkness is the words Tohu wa bohu, which is imagery for chaos, desolation, destruction. And I love that the word of God says this, that the spirit of God hovered above the mess. The spirit of God hovered above the chaos and God began to speak into the chaos. You see what was disordered, God spoke and brought order. You know, you might have th some things in your life right now that are, that are out of order, that are disordered in your life. Maybe there is internal mess going on. Maybe there's internal chaos going on. Can I just remind you today that God will speak into your chaos and perhaps create something beautiful in that mess of your life. God will speak and bring 
order to what is out of order, to what is disordered, the God we serve will speak and create, which says to me where there is a mess, where there is chaos, that is an opportunity for God to create something beautiful. A beautiful mess. You see, the truth is, maybe I'm joined with some people right now who are watching on and you're wrestling with this mess in your life, this chaos. Maybe inside there's just something wrestling. You don't know how you're going to get through this because it just seems like it's negative report after negative report. Maybe there's a young person watching on right now and maybe there's anxiety and maybe depression going on internally and maybe you've lost your joy. Maybe something's ruling your life. Maybe there's something going down with relationships and family. Maybe it's the chaos of maybe finances and maybe you're looking at this year and you just don't know how you're going to keep moving on. You don't know how you're going to keep moving forward. Maybe it's just relationship breakdown. Maybe it's things, but I know that life throws challenges and life gets messy sometimes. But it is in that chaos and in that mess, if I could encourage you to make sure that we keep a perspective. Keep a perspective that it's God in the beginning. That when there is a mess in our life when there is chaos. That is an opportunity for God to move because when God speaks, when God speaks, mountains move. When God speaks, oceans come to a complete stillness. You see, God can create in our chaos and in our mess. And I think it's important in those times to keep a perspective, a perspective of what God can do in our life, a perspective that God is continually working things all together for the good of those who love Him. And just because we can't see it, just because we can't feel it, it doesn't mean He is not moving on our behalf. Keep a perspective that God is in control. You see, there's many things you and I can't control. We can't control the economy. We can't control the uh, society's uh, climate right now when it comes to justice and injustice. We can't control things, but we can control our perspective and how we choose to see things. You see, because I want you to write this down. If what you see is all you see, then you will never see all there is to see. You see, that to me is talking about a perspective, keeping a perspective going, I can't see it all, but I'm going to put my faith and my trust in God who is in control. And though I can't control my external circumstances and my external challenges, I have a perspective to know that God is in control. And yes, it seems messy. Yes, it seems destructive. Yes, it seems right now like life is a complete mess, but I choose to have a perspective, keep my eyes fixed, as the Hebrew writer says, fixed on the author and the finisher. You see, the Hebrew writer writes this in Hebrews 12, keep running with perseverance, keep running this race set out before us, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, because he was writing to a community in that time that was in a messy time of persecution, chaos was breaking out and they were turning and they were running, turning their back on God, going back to the old system, their old way of living. But this Hebrew writer exhorts them to keep their eyes fixed on the person of Jesus and keep running this race marked out for them. That's called a perspective, keeping a God perspective. I think the second thing when it comes to being in messy times, you and I must ensure that we stay connected to community. And I know in these times it can seem like we are physically isolated, socially distant, but how important is it in these times to keep a part of community? You know why? Because you and I were created for community. We were created to belong somewhere. We were created to be a part of something that was bigger than ourselves. We were created to do life with people. Again, the Hebrew writer says, do not forsake the gathering, the meeting together. Don't, don't, don't take that for granted. Don't underestimate its power of coming together. Why? Because each and every one of us as humans, we need to connect with God who is in control, but we need to connect with like-minded believers. And I pray whoever's joining in and watching on right now in the messiness of life, that you would keep a perspective, but you would stay connected to community because there's a real enemy who would love to disconnect you from 
the God relationships in your life. That's why it's important when it comes to your friendships. You see, it's not what you do, it's the crew. Because the crew determines what you do. You see, your friendships, who you choose to put yourself around, the voices that you listen to, the the, the places that you continually position yourself in is absolutely important. How important is it for us to keep positioning ourselves and planting ourselves in the Word of God, but also planting ourselves in the church and in the youth ministry and in places where the Word of God is preached because we, you, me, us, we need community connected to community. So in our mess and in our chaos, we need to keep a perspective. We have to stay connected to community and we've got to keep faith at the forefront of our journey with Jesus. This is where we pick up the story in Mark 5. Mark 5 is a story of, if I could sum it up, it's a story of divine interruptions because Jesus is interrupted on his journey by a synagogue ruler, a well-to-do man, someone that was well-respected in that community. When Jairus turned up, people would have probably made a way for him going, whoa, whoa, there's, there's Jairus. Jairus had a name. Jairus had a well-to-do name. Make way for Jairus. He seems desperate. Let him get to the teacher. Jesus. But then Jairus' story, his miracle is delayed and interrupted by a woman. We don't know her name. All we know is she struggled with an issue for 12 years. And you see, while Jesus is wasting time, delaying the miracle of Jairus' daughter, He is tapped on the shoulder. Jairus is tapped on the shoulder. And the worst news that you could possibly get, Jairus, don't bother the teacher anymore. Verse 35, it says, don't bother. The miracle's over. He delayed for too long. Give up your daughter. She's dead. Can you imagine that moment when he was in expectation? He was in expectation of a miracle coming his way. There's a delay, but now there is no delay. Now the dream is over. The dream's dead. The dream of seeing his daughter healed is now over. Have you ever felt like that? You were waiting for your miracle. You were waiting for a breakthrough. It seemed like you were just waiting in that delay. And you were delayed and delayed and delayed. And then all of a sudden you got the worst news. The dream, the miracle you'd been believing for has now come to a complete stop and end. Maybe people have tapped you on the shoulder. Maybe life's tapped you on the shoulder. Maybe it's thrown discouragement your way and it said, hey, don't bother anymore. Just give up. Give up having a perspective. Give up being a part of a community. Give up this dream of seeing your business thrive one day. Give up this dream of one day doing and living out that God purpose in your life, that dream that you had on your heart. That dream is over. It's dead. It's done with. Just go back. Jesus, look at this. In Mark 5, we see something beautiful happen. Jesus overheard this conversation. Do you know what? I believe God overhears some of those prayers that you've prayed of discouragement. I think God overhears some of those thoughts that you've thought at night when you don't know how you're going to get through this. I think God overhears some of those problems and situations where you just don't know how you're going to make the ends meet. You just don't know how you're going to keep moving forward. Look at this. This is the Word of God. Jesus overhearing them, the Bible says, gets Jairus' face is what I like to imagine. 
looks into his eyes and he says, don't be afraid, just believe. How can you say that to someone that has just lost everything, whose miracle was not only delayed, but whose miracle is now over and dead? Well, we read this scripture, the word of God on this side of eternity. And we see that Jairus was standing with resurrection himself, Jesus. In other words, Jesus was saying, translation, don't be afraid, just believe, because resurrection is coming to your house. Well, it goes on in verse 37. Jesus, Peter, James, and John, he takes them in with him to the house. He turns up in that moment and there is commotion. There is wailing in the house. People are losing it over this dead girl. And Jesus turns up and asks, has the audacity to ask, uh, why all this commotion and wailing? Well, why all this, why all this, why, why, why are you crying? People are like, are you for real, bro? First of all, you're late. I mean, if this was me, I'd be like, first of all, you're late. You're the guy that was meant to heal her. And now you're asking us why we're crying? Go into the room for a second and go see why we're crying. But the Bible says in verse 40, they do something interesting. You see, Jesus says to them, why all this commotion? She's not dead. She's just asleep. Resurrection is speaking right now in that moment. See, maybe that's a word for someone joining in right now. Your dream is not dead. It just needs to be woken up by resurrection life, Jesus in your life. It is not over. Your mess is too, not too messy for God. He can turn up in a moment and he can turn that situation around. But look at this. When Jesus said to them, why all this commotion, why all this wailing? This girl is not dead. She's just asleep. They laughed at him. But I love it because you read on the verses later on in verse 41, verse 42, it then says, after Jesus put them out, savage Jesus turned up. Jesus kicked them out of the house and said, get out of here. Let that be a word to young people. Let that be a word to you, church. Let that be a word for each and every one of us. Anyone joining in right now, there are some mindsets and there are some opinions and there are some distractions that you need to put out of your life because it is robbing you of the miracle that God wants to bring in your life. Maybe it may not be a particular individual. Maybe it's the things like a social media. It's things like the media. It's things like these negative reports that come your way. You know what? You need to keep your eyes fixed on the resurrection life of Jesus and understand he's at your house today. He's at my house today. He's in the house today and he wants to bring resurrection life. But what that means is we're going to have to get rid of some old ways of thinking. We're going to have to get rid of some stinking thinking that is robbing us of this miracle. Your dream is not dead. It is just asleep and it's about to be woken up by the resurrection life of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, whoever's watching on, you might feel like you've got a mess going on. You've got this mess and chaos in your life. Can I just say that is a mess for God to come in and speak to what is dead and clean up and bring clarity. And yes, you may feel like you cannot see it all clearly, but it says in Corinthians, we don't see it all things clearly yet. We are looking through a fog and peering through the midst, but sooner or later, the sun's gonna shine bright. In other words, Jesus is turning up into your house and he wants to bring a miracle to your family. He wants to bring a miracle to your college. He wants to bring a miracle to your school. He wants to bring a miracle to your life. And if you would just remove the distractions and keep your eyes fixed on the resurrection life, Man, something beautiful can happen. A beautiful mess. Jesus turns up, he speaks to Letha Kum. The dead girl wakes up. A miracle takes place right there. And I believe in these moments of mess, these seasons of chaos, that Jesus can turn up and speak 
and bring order to what is out of order, disordered, and he can speak peace, life, deliverance, hope. Don't be afraid, just believe. And I don't know who this is for, but maybe you've given up because you just feel like your life's just a mess. I've gone through too much. I've made too many mistakes. Surely God's not gonna turn up and bring a miracle to my life. That's the grace of God, friend, is there is nothing you and I can do to deserve this grace. He freely gives because He loves you and He wants to bring a miracle and breakthrough in your life. Do you deserve it? Probably not. Do I deserve it? Absolutely not. But the grace of God is coming to your house and He's gonna bring a miracle and He's gonna cause things to come to life again. Don't give up, friend. Don't be afraid. Just believe, keep that perspective, stay engaged, stay connected to community because God is gonna bring breakthrough to your life. Maybe you're looking at things and maybe you've put a full stop where you shouldn't have put a full stop. Friend, I wanna remind you today that God is not finished with you yet. I'll conclude with this story. Uh, years ago, uh, Laura and I, we were in uh, Italy and we had our young daughter then, and uh, we were kind of having dinner, um, and we were watching this uh, gentleman who was an artist. He was one of those artists that drew portraits of individuals, and they were beautiful portraits. I mean, you know those portraits that people draw? I'm not talking like cartoon characters, I'm talking about, I mean, he got it like right. I mean, he, the portrait he drew looked exactly like the person he was drawing. Anyway, we thought, hey, let's get, let's get Willow, our daughter, and let's get a portrait of her because, you know, we need another picture of our daughter. So we sat her down and we talked to, to, the, to, to the gentleman and, you know, he didn't speak too much English. And so we're just kind of communicating, draw the picture of our daughter. And he's like, yeah, thumbs up. He's like, eh, hey, bellissimo, you know, like it's amazing. Anyway, Willow sits down, the artist is here and he's drawing this picture. And I'm looking at Willow. I mean, she's there holding her beautiful pose as she does, you know, and I get kind of a little bit frustrated because number one, this is taking a little bit too long. Why didn't we just take a picture of Willow? We got a picture right there instantly. Great, Laura, here's your picture. But instead, I kind of got over the shoulder of the artist. And I started to kind of just watch as he drew and I'm like, first of all, you're taking really long. Secondly, what you started with there looks nothing like my daughter. I mean, you know, if you're an artist, he's sketching, he's kind of shading things in, he's, he's blowing things, he's rubbing things in. I'm like, what's going on here? That looks nothing like Willow. And I'm kind of getting over his shoulder, I'm looking, I'm giving him my expertise in art, you know, because I'm an art enthusiast and I'm looking at him going, come on, man, like what's going on? I mean, he's looking at me going, hey, well, you know. And I'm like, bro, that looks nothing like her. How long is this going to take? Until Laura kind of tapped me over the shoulder or knocked me over the head, I think. She said, Peter, just let him do what he needs to do. The artist isn't finished yet. <laughs> you know, in that moment, <clears throat> that spoke to me. Because how many times do you and I get on God's shoulder and we bring our opinion well, if I was God, this is what I would do. And God, this is taking a little bit too long. And God, uh, what are you doing? That Why is it taking so long? And this looks nothing like the dream I've been praying for. This looks nothing like what I planned on this year looking like. This looks nothing like. And we go over the shoulder to God and God kind of just looks at me and you and kind of go, hey, I'm God all by myself. I created the heavens and the earth. I think God sometimes gets a little frustrated and he says this, I'm not finished yet. And maybe there's people watching on right now and you've put a full stop where you shouldn't have put a full stop. You've closed the book on what is just a chapter in your life. Maybe you've concluded, well, the artist is done with the picture. No, 
The artist is still painting. The author is still writing. God is still bringing miracles to your mess. And if you and I can just stand back and get a perspective that though it may look messy, understand the artist is still painting and it's a beautiful mess that is going to come towards this miracle and breakthrough in your life and my life. It's a beautiful mess, but God, I'm going to trust you with my life because you are God all by yourself and what is disordered and out of order, you speak and you bring order, you bring clarity, you bring deliverance, you bring peace because you are the God that loves each and every one of us. And I want to pray for you in this moment because I really do believe people are going to encounter His presence and understand that God isn't finished with me yet. And I'm believing for this in my life. It looks like a mess, but I believe God's going to do something miraculous. He's going to turn around the situations in my life that I just wrestle with at night because I just don't know how I'm going to get through this mess. Well, God is in the mess with you. Listen, Jesus is not the light at the end of the tunnel. Jesus is the light in the tunnel. In other words, He's not waiting at the end of your mess. He's not waiting at the end of your chaos. No, Jesus is in the chaos with you. And that's what I'm going to pray right now, that you would feel and sense His presence in the chaos and in the mess of your life. Father, right now, whoever's joining us, Lord, I thank you that you are there. Lord, I pray in these moments, they would truly feel your presence. Lord, they would be aware that you are with them. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, may people right now go get an understanding that you are there, Lord, in their chaos, in their mess, God, and that you can speak and bring clarity. Lord, you can speak and bring breakthrough. Lord, you in our chaos can bring uh, creation, Father. You can create something good. And Lord, where it looks like bad, where it looks like mess, where it just looks like well, there, this is never going to end, I thank you that you can speak in this moment and calm the waters, calm the storm, bring everything to stillness. And God, in these moments, we are still. As your word says in Psalm 46, we are still and we know that you are God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Well, hey, it's been such an honor bringing the word today and I'm believing that it's helped Many young people. I'm going to hand it back to the crew in UK. Uh, again, thanks for having Laura and I. It's been such an honor to be a part of this. Bless you guys. Hey, come on, let's thank Pete Togs for that incredible word. I mean, wow. I mean, just drop in an emoji of what you thought of that message. So many comments coming in like I needed that word and so many fire emojis and, and um, what an incredible, incredible word. Pete, if you're watching this or even if you watch this back, we just want to say a big thank you for speaking into Youth Revival Conference 2020. It's an honor that you got to speak to us. And I want to speak to you tonight. Maybe you've never made the decision to follow Jesus. Then this is your moment to, to know him, to know his presence, to know his grace. Pete mentioned that word grace and that grace is available for each and every one of us. And he talked about how Jesus is in our mess, that he's not waiting for us to get perfect or he's not waiting for us to, for our lives to be perfect or everything to be right, but he's actually wanting to journey this life out with us. He said a phrase and it really stuck with me. Jesus isn't the light at the end of the tunnel. He's the light in the tunnel. And many times our life can look like that tunnel. It can look like we're not knowing where we're going, but I really believe that Jesus wants to journey with each and every one of us through that tunnel called life. The Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. And today you can know that no matter what life has looked like for you, nothing can separate you from His love. And I wanna encourage you tonight, maybe you've never made that decision to follow Jesus. Well, this is your moment. Bible tells us that today is the day for salvation. So don't wait for another moment. This is your moment right now to accept Jesus, to accept his love, to accept his grace into your life. But today you would say, maybe I made that decision a long time ago, but today I, I, I've not been walking with Jesus. My life doesn't look like I've been walking with Jesus and I need to get that right tonight. Then this is your moment as well. Right now, our chat hosts are putting in the chat the ways that you can make that decision and let us know because we'd love to pray for you. We'd love to believe the best for you and we'd love to connect with you. 
and know that you're making that decision so we can point you in the right direction. We can help you uh, get into this life, knowing Jesus in your life because it's the greatest, greatest decision you can make. And so I'm giving you that opportunity right now. If that's you, whatever way you choose to respond, why don't you make that decision now? Why don't you choose that response right now? Maybe it's clicking a link. Maybe it's texting a number. Whatever it is, make that decision right now. Don't wait for another moment. This is your moment. I want you to know this, that Jesus loves you. He's for you. And that nothing, nothing that you could have done could separate you from his love. And so right now, you're making that response. Click that button, click that link, send that text, whatever you need to do. Maybe you're watching with a watch party right now, a youth group. I want you to tell your youth leader that you're making that decision. I'm making that decision tonight. And I'd love youth groups, youth ministries all across the UK. If someone's making that decision in your watch parties, please let us know. We'd love to hear the stories. We'd love to pray and uh, give you resources to help you on this journey and help young people on this journey of knowing Jesus. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray and it's not too late. You can respond right now in this moment. But come on, everywhere, we're gonna pray. And then we're gonna go into a time of worship. But when I say amen, let's celebrate with every single person, clapping emojis, you know, uh, the confetti emoji, whatever it's, celebration emojis, celebrating all those people making that decision tonight. And remember, you can still make that decision right now. You can still respond in this moment. So let me pray for you. Then we're going to go into worship. And as we go into worship, let's celebrate all these people. Jesus, I thank you that even though we might not be in the same room, that you see every single person making that decision. And so God, we come before you and we say, we give our lives to you. We thank you that you're not distant from us, but that actually you're in our mess and you're in our lives right now. And I pray for every single person making that decision that they would know your grace, they would know your love, they would know your hand upon them. I pray they'd even know your Holy Spirit filling them right now, wherever they are. And we thank you for your word, Jesus. We thank you that it speaks to each and every one of us. And uh, we just take that word and we put it into action. We decide tonight that we're going to move forward from this, that this wasn't just a nice moment, but this is going to be a transformational moment for each and every one of us. And so, Jesus, we want to give you all the honor all the glory and all the praise. Amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate all those people making that decision and let's worship together. Cool work. 
Hey, how incredible was that? I want to firstly say congratulations to every single person who made a decision just then to follow Jesus. There's no better decision that you could ever make. I want to encourage you, make sure you follow that link if you've made a decision to follow Jesus tonight. Um, and also there's a Zoom call live right now with some youth leaders that you can join if you want to speak to them more about that decision and be prayed for. But why don't we celebrate every single person in the chat right now, congratulate them for making that decision. Shay, how incredible has Youth Revival Experience 2 been? It's been amazing, Ben. It's been so good. And we've got so much more coming, haven't we, Shay? Yeah, we have. You're gonna, Shay, in a moment, Shay's going to explain what we're going to do right now. Uh, but just a reminder that we've got space happening from 9 p.m. with loads of incredible things happening Fortnite. Don't forget to send us your gamer tag if you haven't already. We've also got bingo happening, live music, uh, also a pizza drop off, which Come is going to be pretty special as well. But Shay, we did some revival cruise earlier yeah. and we're going to have some more right now. So why yeah. don't you talk us through what so people need to do? So at 8.15, we have revival cruise on again. Um, so make sure you get on that Zoom call. It's a great opportunity just to chat and discuss the preach, the amazing preach we just heard, to meet new people, to pray together again, and just to connect with people. So yeah, I'd definitely say like, make sure you're on there. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. But were there a revival crews that good earlier? Did it was so that? good. If you weren't there, I'm sorry, because you missed out. You did. <laughs> so there we go. You yeah. need to join a revival crew right now. And as Shay said, the meeting ID and password are going to be on the screen shortly. So make sure you go and follow that. And then make sure you're back on the stream for 9 p.m. for space with everything that's going to be happening. Shay, should we say bye? Yeah, it's been great. It's been awesome. <laughs> we'll see you very soon. Goodbye. Bye.